so glad that you up early in the morning with us to go over this most important topic. It's interesting, uh, of late, I, I joined an organization and as part of this organization there is a training, there's a back office and there's a training. And as I was reading the uh, workbook and the training, it actually <laughs> sounded like the lessons that I have been um, uh, teaching. And it, and it actually talks about what has worked over thousands of years. It's, it's the hero story. But you have to be willing to be the hero. You have to be willing to step out there and be all that God has called you to be. You can you can study, you can procrastinate, but you will never have the experience or even discover the path until you make the goal your present. You know, don't keep the goal that you, you're striving for, the thing that you desire way off in your future, make that what you desire, your now. And then then start as though it's with you now that you become that now. And you will discover the path and the path will be very clear to you. That same thought is in this these pamphlets and this study. And I thought, man, so even uh, the business executives see the importance of not setting things off into the future, but actually making those things now. Just be. Don't be becoming. Be. Because you'll never arrive if you're becoming. You'll never get there if you're just becoming. You can have some great experiences, some great aha moments, but you will not have the full impact that is planned for your life if you don't be all that God has called you to be. So we want to get back to some notes real quick. And, and a lot of this we're going to be uh, doing as a rehearsal. And if I uh, don't waste too much time, we will finish this tonight. This will be the last installment of this. Uh, here in Hebrews, one more time, Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things so for The evidence of things not seen. Becoming implies two things. We are not there yet. And number two, it will take time to get there. Knowing versus experience, learning versus experience. In Second uh, Timothy 3, 7, it reads, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because as long as you're learning and, and, and getting the book knowledge, you never have the knowledge of experience. There's nothing that will be experienced. Yet it is important to prepare. It is, especially the subject matter of career, something that you don't know anything about. It's good, all right, to learn. It's good to prepare. It's good to take in knowledge. But if, you, if you're afraid to step out into it, then you will never have the experience and be what you are dreaming of becoming. You have to not just keep on becoming and keep studying and keep putting it off. You've got to step right into it and be. Seize the moment and be. Don't always be becoming. You have to arrive at being this, be light, be strong, be healed. You got to arrive there, not becoming healed, not setting it off. Faith is now. And all that we learn in, in the teaching and the wisdom of Christ has to do with oneness and now. Not put anything in the future, but now. Not living in the past and not really concerned about the future, but you're now. You're now you are. You're now you are. And because we walk by faith, and not by our senses. It's not what our senses is telling us. It's not what our imagination is telling us. It's what God has told us about ourselves and accepting God's word and God's 
uh, intuition as truth and moving with that intuition by following the Spirit of God, we're acting like it is because it is. <laughs> and because we, we are acting like it is, we're going to have the experience of it is. All right? That'll, that'll keep you excited. That'll move you from victory to victory, from glory uh, to glory. The um, unenlightened ego attempts to become an enlightened ego, thus ensuring its continual experience this pathetic ego pretends to become spirit. If we allow ourselves to fall into the ego trap, we could be stuck there for a very long time. This is just another delaying maneuver. Sadly, some of us accept the enlightened ego state as the final end state. It is not the end state. This course uh, is not beyond immediate learning unless you believe that God wills takes time. <clears throat> this means only that you uh, would rather delay the recognition that his will is so. The holy instant is this instant and very instant. The one you want it to be, it is. The one you would not have it be is lost to you. You must decide when it is. Delay it not. For beyond the past, and future where you will not find it, it stands in shimmering readiness for your acceptance. Yet you cannot bring it into glad awareness where you do not want it, for it holds the whole release from illness. The real decision, many students believe that they need only complete the workbook and <clears throat> suddenly everything changes. All problems are solved. All unwanted mind states disappear, and we end up living in a state of peace, joy, and unending bliss from day uh, henceforth, from this day, or today henceforth. We await the final lightning bolt from the sky that would change us forever. While, the, while that would certainly be wonderful, it generally does not happen. We find ourselves still fighting, still working, still trying. And why? Because we have not yet really decided. Because as the result of the influence of the ego, we tend to believe we are still becoming. What, we, what are we doing the time in which we are actively engaged in becoming? The ego. We are becoming ego. We are being ego. We're attempting to become spirit. That is a, a position we have chosen. You're not becoming spirit. You are spirit. That's why we had you repeat. And you should repeat it to yourself daily because it's, 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 it's actually mind over matter. That's what this is really is. Uh, we really training you to put your mind and have your mind control the matter that is trying to control you, your ego's mind over matter. You are an infinite being. That's what God created you. You remind, you remain just as God has created you. You haven't changed. God is eternal. He's eternal in his decision. He's eternal in his creation. He created you spirit. You remain as God created you. You are spirit. You are spirit. You're watching me this morning. Don't drop your coffee. Don't drop the donut. You are spirit. Okay? You are an infinite spirit. You don't have a beginning. And you don't have an end. You are, you are as your father is. As he is, so are you. So now what has beginning and has, has an ending is your body. And your ego is attached to your body. I want to say it again. Your ego is attached to your body and is afraid of coming to its end. You that are aware and conscious of your spirit being are not afraid of coming to an end because you know that the law of life won't allow you to die. Yes, your body, you will leave the body. When you leave the body, the animation of the body will cease, but you will continue. You don't die. You will never die. You will never even taste death. You are an infinite being, and you're not subject to the frailties of this body. In fact, your infinite being gives Animation gives life to this body because without your infinite being, this body would not even exist or move or have any type of mobility. 
this body wouldn't have the knowledge to know about pain or difference or separation. It's your liveliness that gives it life and animation. Now we have to correct our mind and our thought. Again, it's thought over matter. And when we do that, we will align ourselves with the mind and the will of our Father. Amen. <clears throat> because we have not yet really decided, because as the result of the influence of the ego, we tend to believe we are still becoming. What we, uh, what are we doing during the time in which we are actively engaged in becoming? The ego. We are uh, the ego. We are, I'm sorry. We are the becoming ego. We are being ego while attempting to become spirit. That is a position that we have chosen. We simply have not yet made the decision to be right now what the course calls or asks us to be right now. And so, uh, seen from the perspective of the ego, enlightened or otherwise, there is a real struggle going on and that struggle appears to be necessary. Seen from uh, the perspective of spirit, all of this requires no effort whatsoever. Yet, the very minute you make the decision, the real decision to be spirit only, all your ego problems disappear instantly. The path being, the path is being now. Clearly understand and define the end state desired. Clearly understand and define the end state that you desire. Whatever end state you desire, define it and understand what that end state is, then be that end state now. It is imperative to understand you will not get the real experience of any path while working towards the end state. You will only get the real experience of the path that you have arrived at. Be the end state. You will not get it at 90% or 95% or 88 or 98% or 99.999%, you will only get it when you be the end state totally. Granted, you may have some pleasant experiences and are life-changing uh, eureka moments along the way, of course, of course, but these will pale in comparison to being. Here's an example. You want to be a race car driver. So you go to school, you get all the racing car driver books that you can get from magazines, from libraries, and you read on being a race car driver. Now, if there's a school that teaches you to be a race car driver, you will go set in the classes and get all the knowledge, read all the books about being a race car driver. Then comes the day that you have to go to the track and actually step into the race car get behind the wheel, start it up, and race that car around the track so that you'll be even more prepared as being, not becoming, a race car driver. But it takes you to get behind the wheel and to drive that race car for the first time. But you panic and you don't get in behind the wheel. You think, no, I'm not ready yet. But you are ready. You read all the books. You've taken all the tests. You're passed. You're ready. Now you need to step into it. But you don't step into it. So you never actually do what you've been training to do. You never be what you, you've been you've been becoming, but you never be. You never arrive at being a race car driver. This is unfortunately what happens to many students are believers of the word. Yes, of course, they do what uh, they do want to have the experience that the word offers, but they never actually step out on the word and do it. It becomes a mental exercise rather than the experience it is meant to be. Remember, only the doer of the work is blessed. To, uh, to gain all the word of God offers us, we must stop becoming and instead be the word of God, what the word of God says we are in Christ. Right now, we must achieve the state we must achieve the experience of being. We're not, we need to do that when. We need to do that now. Amen. I want to say it again. We need to do that now. 
So I want to I want to rehearse with you some things that that we said before in the previous teaching in being. I want to put this right at the end. We, yes, we've gone through this. I'm going to go through it real quick, all right, today, and to add this to your arsenal, to add this to your understanding, to add this to your imagination, to add this to your knowledge. And you're going to step out on it today. You're going to start thanking God that you are an infinite being, all right? So now, uh, I have entitled this, I am an infinite being, and I have read over in parentheses, revisit it. I am an infinite being. I am not subject to a finite body. I am not a body. I am an infinite being. Now, your body is going to tell you all kinds of things. Your body is going to uh, protest. Your ego is going to use the body to protest against this truth. Because you are an infinite being, you are eternal life manifested in a finite body. The finite body does not have rule or dominion over the, the, your eternal life because the scripture identifies this eternal life that's in you is greater than the life that's outside of you, okay? Or that which is in the natural or that which is in the flesh. This eternal spirit, this eternal life in you is greater. I want to say it again. This eternal life that is in you is greater, amen, than he that is in the world, which is your flesh. Your senses, the body is in the world. Your eternal life is greater. Your eternal life is greater. Your finite, physical, carnal life has a for sale date. It ends. It suffers. It has sickness. It has disease. It has weaknesses. It is frail. It makes you think that you are not a believer. It makes you think that there's something wrong with your faith. There ain't nothing wrong with your faith. All you got to do is change your attitude Wear this body and this life loosely as a loose garment. Don't be attached to it. Don't let anything attach itself to you. And keep reminding yourself of your eternal being and allow the eternal joy and the peace of God to preserve you in this body. It'll preserve your life. It'll give you strength. It'll give you favor. It will actually be miraculous in your day-to-day -day living. All right. Amen. Okay, here we go. Romans chapter 2, the mirror Bible. The law of the Spirit is the liberating force of life in Christ. This leaves me with no further obligation to the law of sin and death. Spirit has superseded the sin-enslaved senses as the principal law of our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17 says, Now, in the light of our co-inclusion in his death and resurrection, whoever you thought you were before, in Christ you are a brand new person. The old ways of seeing yourself and everyone else are over. Acquaint yourself with the new. I am a new creation born of love. My father is love and so am I. I am one with my Father, as he is, so am I. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Our skin suits have a sell by date. Our spirit bodies are eternal. The same God who fashioned these skin bodies in our mother's womb engineered our spirit bodies to be our permanent dwelling. Facing... Uh, uh, pressures, I'm sorry, facing pressure times the way we often do makes us sigh with longing to exchange our skin suit with the permanent splendor of the heavenly body. In the meantime, whatever challenges we are facing in the meat box, we know that we shall never be found naked since we are already fully clothed with our heavenly identity in Christ, in our inner person. We are not complaining about our bodies, even though we are often aware of its frailties. Instead, we yearn to be overwhelmed with life. We know that every evidence of death, even in our bodies, will dissolve into life. God wired us this way. His spirit already confirms within us the present evidence of eternity we are eternal beings by design. We are cheerfully courageous. 
knowing that our intimate address in our earthly bodies cannot d distance us from the Lord, since we originate from him. Faith is our spirit. I'm sorry. Faith is to our spirit what our senses are to our bodies. While the one in engages with the fading and the fray and fragile, the other celebrates perfection. Faith is not blindly believing what you don't understand. Faith sees. The eye through the lenses of the law cannot see what faith sees. Faith is seen through the Father's eyes. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You know, uh, and the reason we're reading this, is I'm trying to get all this in <laughs> before our time is up, but all these words speak to the life that's in you. We have to take a hold of the thoughts that will exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. And anything that exalts itself against that knowledge, we capture that and bring it to the obedience of Christ. We take control over our thought life. We take control of how our minds, uh, what our mind says about us. We correct that. We understand that we're greater than even our minds because we are spirit and we uh, we have insight and we have counsel from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. Amen. Now, when, you know, we got into the thing about sin, uh, the error of sin and believing in that. That is just the short part of that thing is that you have a misidentity of your sonship. And because you have a misidentity of your sonship and you identify with something else other than sonship and perfection, you begin to behave based on what's in your mind and your thought left. Whatever has captured your mind, you behave that way. But it doesn't change your eternal self. It doesn't change your eternal being. That which is passing away, that which is fading away, does not uh, determine or cancel out that eternal choice. God says, I know my thoughts toward you. Amen. So, you know, you might not know God's thoughts toward you. The world might not know God's thoughts toward you, but God knows his thoughts toward you. Your ego don't even know and capture the reality of the love of God, the measure of, 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 and of, of the love of Christ, how it is immeasurable. You can't find no end. No matter if you go to the north, the east, the south, or the west, there's no end to his love. His love encompasses you, and nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Keep your mind fixed there. You stay there, right there, rooted and grounded in his love. See that. Be that. Be the love. Be the joy. Be the life of God in this world. Your will be done on earth. Your will be done, Father, on earth as it is done in heaven. I will be the will of God expressed because I am an image bearer. I'm an image and likeness bearer of my Father. And as he is in heaven, so am I here on earth. I am being what I am created to be. And that is the image and likeness of the light, the likeness and image bearer of my heavenly father. Amen. When you see me, you see my father. When you hear me, you hear my father because I'm being my father expression, his express image. Amen. All right. I'm getting all excited. Let's, let's finish these notes real quick. All right. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse four, the dynamic of our strategy is to reveal is revealed in God's ability to disengage mindsets and perceptions that have held people captive in pseudo fortresses for centuries. Every lofty idea and argument positioned against God's knowledge of us is cast down and exposed to be a mere invention of our own imagination. We arrest every thought at the at spirit point anything that could possibly trigger an opposing threat to our redeemed identity and innocence is taken captive. The caliber of our weapon is empowered by the revelation of the ultimate consequence of the obedience of Christ. Mirror Bible. I am an infinite being. I am not subject to my enslaved senses to what is right or wrong. I am only subject to what is in my mind. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am saved by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ. I am a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, the new creation, the new species, 
found in Christ. I have been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, <clears throat> but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, whom I'm one with, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not set aside. I will not set aside uh, uh, the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, of knowing what is right or wrong, then Christ died in vain. Philippians chapter uh, 1, verse 23. For I am hard pressed between the two, having, to de having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Amen. I have a little note that said way into true and false healing, but we'll do that another time. But I'm, I'm telling you, this is the day. This is your day. I want you to be encouraged. It's early in the morning. This word has come to encourage you and to just stay with you all day long, to be in the recesses of your mind. I learned something. I learned it years ago, but I relearned it again uh, through this other course that I'm taking, that you have to hear something over and over and over and again. Yes, you're excited about what you're hearing this morning, and you're going to leave out and you're going to go, and you're going to have a wonderful day. But the scripture says, don't be like that man as he's going through the day. Forget what type of man he was. He looked in the mirror, he walked away from the mirror, and forgot what type of man he was. You got it. The word is your mirror of who you are. This word is reminding you of who you are. So go back and play it again. Play it again and again and again and again. It takes at least 11 times of hearing the truth before it actually becomes a part of who you are, where you can articulate it with your own energy, your own personality, your own insight. Yes, it's coming as revelation. Yes, it's coming as a word of encouragement this morning, but it becomes you. If you listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it, then in listening, you will get a vision of how this word is to be applied in your everyday life. Praise God. Ooh, look at what time it is. So praise God. We did that really, 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 really quick. So what I want to do is I want to thank you for being our partners. We want partners and we need more partners, but I thank you for being our partners. I thank you for going to www.nccfc.net. There's a donation tab there. Just click on that donation tab. Use your credit card or your debit card and leave a love offering. We will be highly blessed by your gift. And we will take a good note and give you a report at the end of the year of all your gifts and all your giving so you can use it for credit because you give it to a nonprofit. We all, you also can give through mailing. Some of us are my age and older. We don't like this computer stuff. <laughs> it's, it's enough for us just to be on YouTube. We like to mail it in. So you can mail it in at 2851 West 120th Street. Sweet E is in there with 522 Hawthorne, California, 90250. So you can mail that in or you can go to Zelle and you can Zelle sisterweed at yahoo.com. Again, that's sisterweed at yahoo.com. Now, yeah, of course, you're on YouTube. That's where you see me. And our handle is Will We 3 Don't forget to like the video. Hit that thumbs up, like the video. And if you're not a subscriber yet, ring the bell so that you can come become a subscriber and when we go live or when we post the video as we did this morning you will know that that video has been posted we can uh we can have a premiere watch the videos together or you can go back again at this address will we three and go through the library of videos and hear other subject matters that will help bring you uh further and further into the, the course that we're walking through you have the same clarity the same understanding as God has given us, and I'm telling you, it is a free place over here. And if that desire in your heart is there for you 24-7, amen? Well, I want to thank you and bless you for this day. This is the day. Amen. It's the 2nd of June. This is the day. This is a good day for you. Be blessed. And remember that God has plans for your life, and none of those plans include defeat. See you Wednesday at 10 o'clock. But And uh be blessed again. And remember, one more time, God has a plan for you. Be successful in his plans. Accept the success. Accept the blessings today. In Jesus' name, Shalom.